In this problem, we need to graph this rational function here. And to do that, we better find all asymptotes, holes, and x and y intercepts. So to start with, we better look to see if the, this function has any holes. Holes are when there is a common factor involving an x that you can reduce between the numerator and the denominator. Looking at our numerator, no common factor. Looking at the denominator, no common factor. There is nothing we can reduce in this problem, so we know that there are no holes for this rational function. Once we've determined that, then we can go on and look to see if there are any vertical asymptotes. Remember, vertical asymptotes are when we've reduced away any holes, you set the denominator equal to zero. So what's the equation of our vertical asymptote? We only have one in this problem, and it's x equals three. Now we need to look to see if there are any horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes we find based on the degree of the numerator and the denominator. So let's look at our numerator here. What's the degree? What's the highest exponent on the x? The degree equals 1. And what about the denominator? The degree also equals 1. So in this case, the degrees are equal. And remember, when the degrees are equal, you have a horizontal asymptote, and the equation is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficient. What's the leading coefficient in the numerator? 2. What's the leading coefficient in the denominator? What number's in front of this x? A 1. So it's y equals, whoops, 2 over 1, which is y equals 2. So let me write it down here. My horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. Now remember, once you found you have a horizontal asymptote, it cannot also have a slant asymptote. So we found all our asymptotes. Now we have to find the x and the y intercepts. So how do you find the x intercepts of any function? You set y equal to 0. Or remember, in this case, it's f of x equal to 0. So 0 equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 3. When is a fraction equal to 0? When the numerator equals 0. So let's solve this. Subtract 1 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. So I get x equals negative a half. And what is that as an ordered pair? It is negative a half zero. That is my x-intercept. Now we need to find the y-intercept. If I can get my pen to work. And the y-intercept, remember, you always find by setting x equal to zero. So what is f of zero? Wherever you see an x up here, what are you going to put? A zero. So you're going to have 2 times 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 3. So that is negative 1 third. So as an ordered pair, that's 0, negative 1 third. And the only other thing it's useful to find is does the graph cross the horizontal asymptote that I'm going to abbreviate like that. And the way you do it is you set the function 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 equal to the horizontal asymptote to see if this is true. And what's the simplest way to solve an equation that looks like this? Cross multiply. So 2x plus 1 times 1. So 2x plus 1 times 1 has to equal 
2 times x minus 3. Running out of room here, so let me write it up here. So I get 2x plus 1 equals 2x minus 6. Subtract 2x from both sides. And if you notice, all your x's disappear. And you get 1 equals negative 6, which is definitely false. So it does not cross the horizontal asymptote. So now we've found all that information. Now we're ready to go on to the next slide and actually graph it. So I've put all the information we found on the other slide on here. We've got our asymptotes, our intercept, and the fact that it doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote. So let's look at the vertical asymptote x equals 3. So let's graph that first. So remember, asymptotes are always with dotted lines. So here's my vertical asymptote x equals 3. I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 2. And remember, graphs never ever cross a vertical asymptote, and we found in this case it doesn't cross its horizontal asymptote either. Now I have the x-intercept of negative 1 half 0. So I start at the origin and go half a unit to the left, which is kind of hard to do, but it gives me a point about there. Then I need 0, negative 1 third, my y-intercept. So again, start on the origin and go down about a third of a unit. And I've got my second point. And I think you can see that in this region of the graph, since it can't cross the horizontal asymptote, it can't cross the vertical one, my graph is going to come in go through those two points, and then approach my vertical asymptote. So we can draw in that part of the graph. So remember, it approaches the horizontal asymptote out at negative infinity, doesn't cross it, comes down through those two points, and then approaches your vertical asymptote, and again, doesn't cross it. So I'm very happy with what happens to the left of this vertical asymptote. But now I've got to figure out what happens on this side. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no points. My two intercepts were on this side, which allow me to figure out that shape. I have two possibilities for the graph to the right of x equals 3. It could start down here and go up here and approach my horizontal asymptote, or it could start up here and approach it from this direction. And we really have enough information to determine which one is true. If my graph did this, came up and approached from this direction, it would have to cross the x-axis somewhere in this region. But we know there's only one x-intercept. The graph does not cross the x-axis anywhere there. So that is not a possibility. So we're pretty sure the graph is going to look like this. And all we have to do is just double check by picking some point to the right of x equals 3. We I could pick x equals 4, x equals 5, x equals 6. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pick x equals 5. So all I have to do is figure out f of 5. So up here is my function. So f of 5 is 2 times 5 plus 1 over 5 minus 3. 2 times 5 is 10 plus 1 is 11 over 2. Since I'm going to graph it, I'm going to write it as a decimal as 5.5. So my point is 5, 5.5. And is that in the region we thought it should be in? Well, when x equals 5, y equals 5.5 is up there. 
And remember, we thought the graph had to look like it was up here, and it is. So let me extend my horizontal asymptote a little bit. And so what's my graph going to look like? It's going to come down like this.